Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the show. I'm Taimur Shamil. The Taliban delegation was uh, visiting Pakistan and they were on their visit to uh, meet the uh, Pakistani Foreign Minister, Shai Mahmood Qureshi. And uh, Foreign Minister was also accompanied by the GISI and uh, Foreign Secretary. This was a high-level delegation uh, by the Taliban uh, from the Qatar office. And these uh, uh, members of the Taliban were here to discuss about the prospects for peace and stability in Afghanistan. And both countries talked about uh, how they can move forward with the intra-Afghan peace process. And uh, Taliban also appreciated Pakistan's stance and support for the intra-Afghan uh, peace talks. Uh, Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi talked about the intra-Afghan peace talks. And there's something very important that he uh, hinted at. Rather, he explained that the spoilers can be playing a negative role and they would want to sabotage the intra-Afghan uh, peace talks. And we know that uh, this point and this time is very crucial when it comes to Afghanistan's uh, intra-Afghan uh, talks. Uh, the future is kind of uncertain in a way that there are internal divisions within the Afghan political setup. Uh, although President Ghani has accepted the lawyer Jirga's uh, approval to release the Taliban prisoners, but at the same time in different talks he has uh, hinted that he is probably still not comfortable with the idea of releasing the Taliban. There's another twist. Some of the countries, European countries, France and uh, Australia, uh, they have uh, put some uh, reservations on the release of the Taliban. Uh, Stanek Zay, who is the, uh, one of the chief negotiators of the, from the Taliban side, has said that they won't start the intra-Afghan talks unless there is uh, even one Taliban prisoner uh, captive uh, with the Afghan government. So uh, things are tricky in Afghanistan. The, the uh, violence continues in Afghanistan. But the issue is that all the countries in the region, Afghanistan, the people of Afghanistan, Taliban, they all want peace and stability in Afghanistan. And uh, there is hope that we can move on and forward from this point. Uh, but the spoilers, as I said earlier, they are there to play their role to sabotage the prospects for peace and stability. We have a report on uh, this recent visit on the Pakistan-Afghanistan relations. And after this report, uh, we are going to have our discussion with our special guest in the studios. Uh, we'll see the report. A Taliban political commission delegation headed by Mullah Abdul Ghani Barada visited Pakistan. The talks at the Foreign Office were largely focused on recent developments in the Afghan peace process and convening of intra-Afghan talks. Welcoming the delegation, Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi underscored Prime Minister Imran Khan's consistent stance that there was no military solution to the conflict in Afghanistan and that a political settlement was the only way forward. Highlighting Pakistan's positive contribution to the peace and reconciliation process, culminating in the U.S.-Taliban peace agreement in Doha on 29th of February 2020, the foreign minister underlined that this historic opportunity must be seized by the Afghan stakeholders to secure an inclusive, broad-based and comprehensive negotiated political solution. The foreign minister also cautioned against spoilers who did not wish to see return of peace in the region. <laughs> जो आपस में तबादला ख्याल किया उससे मैं पुरमीत हूं कि इंशाल्लाह मुस्तकबिल करीब में मुश्किलात के बावजूद और इस पे कोई शक नहीं कि स्पॉइलर्स मौजूद हैं उसके बावजूद मैं पुरमीत हूं कि रास्ता निकल सकता है he urged the international community to enhance its engagement for reconstruction and economic development of afghanistan Mullah Abdul Ghani Barada thanked the Foreign Minister for the invitation and affirmed support for efforts for peace, security and development in Afghanistan. The delegation also thanked the government and people of Pakistan for their consistent support to the people of Afghanistan, including for graciously hosting Afghan refugees for over four decades. Right, that was the report. We are joined by Air Vice Marshal Tahir Ikramullah Bhatti, a renowned analyst on uh, Pakistan's national security and its relations with the neighboring countries. Welcome to the show, uh, AVM Bhatti. We are joined by Mr. Rob Hassan, renowned senior uh, strategic analyst and uh, director of Regional Peace Institute, an independent think tank based in Islamabad. So, welcome to the show. Pleasure. Yes, Thank you. Uh, and we'll be joined by uh, Dr. Sarvat Rauf, foreign affairs expert on Skype in a while. Uh, I also uh, welcome uh, Dr. Sarvat. Uh, 
uh, Avian Bhatti, starting with this recent development, Taliban were visiting uh, uh, Islamabad and interestingly, this was their second visit in last 10 months. So, they are already acting like an organization, rather state, you know, representatives visiting different countries and that's what they have said that it's about uh, kind of working on goodwill with the neighbors and with the region. How do you see this development? Well, you see, uh, uh, besides this, uh, that uh, they are uh, continuing their visits to Pakistan, which uh, besides other things, uh, reiterates or uh, reconfirms the role or the importance of Pakistan mm -hmm. in the uh, peace process that is going on. And it's inching forward because uh, the progress has not been made as envisaged in the agreement that was signed on 29 February, as we uh, saw in the report. And uh, when, when, when Taliban uh, come to Pakistan, they have been meeting at the same time with China, they have been meeting Russia, mm -hmm. of course, uh, they, have been, they have signed this agreement uh, with, the, with the Americans, which clearly demonstrates uh, their position mm -hmm. and or their position of strength, uh, which clearly uh, indicates that they will be in a, in a commanding position in whatever political disp dispensation mm -hmm. eventually comes about mm -hmm. in Afghanistan. Though they have openly stated that they do not like to monopolize on power and uh, they, would li they are prepared to share, but the fact remains that the way they are going about uh, reaching this agreement or uh, seeing its implementation, uh, which clearly uh, indicates, as you just said, that they are uh, quite aware and conscious of the position that they have acquired. And they, they, they look forward to that role mm. uh, of, of a major or a dominant role uh, in, in, the, in the next uh, setup that does uh, come about in Afghanistan. And uh, mm. of course, uh, when, we, when we talk of spoilers and we, when we talk of uh, 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 you know, very little traction and uh, not much progress having been made, at least as per the time scale mm. and the actual uh, <coughs> negotiation or the dialogue between Taliban and the, the government in Kabul, has uh, not happened yet mm. and uh, as we also know that the, the major obstacle in this was the release of all the uh, Taliban prisoners Taliban, right. and uh, that was part of the agreement and in, 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 in a manner uh, mm. we can say that the, the Americans are uh, uh, guarantors uh, of, of this implementation mm. because they, when they, they signed this they, they are supposed to ensure uh, that, that it, it happens and all its conditionalities are met. Uh, on right. their part, of course, Taliban have released the prisoners and it's now the, the Kabul government which is supposed to release the remaining 320 right. odd, odd prisoners. And almost there are, I think, still 20 commandos and uh, people uh, that are in the Taliban uh, captivity that the Tab Kabul government is demanding. Uh, but, Sir Hassan, how do you see this situation? and? Uh, <coughs> uh, the situation for uh, Professor Ghani, uh, his situation, President Ghani, uh, his political future in this time, how do you see it? Well, uh, let's begin by uh, trying to see who are the stakeholders in this, mm -hmm. this process you know, which is ongoing. There is the U.S. with its allies. Uh, demonstrably, demonstrably, they have said you know, that they want to withdraw troops from Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. But they have continued stakes, strategic stakes in this part of the world, you know. So it's that withdrawal. Uh, I don't know whether, it, whether, whether ever the, this withdrawal is going to be total, that they're going to leave this region. No, I don't think so. That is going to happen. So there, is, there seems to be a level of divergence between what they proclaim they shall be doing and what actually may happen at right, some point right. in time. Then is uh, the Taliban. Uh, quite obviously, uh, they want a commencement of the intra Afghan dialogue because commencement of intra Afghan dialogue is the means to their... Uh, becoming a shareholder in power. So they, right. there's no ambiguity uh, so far as they are concerned, basically. Then, of course, is the regime of Kabul. Uh, the commencement of an uh, inter-Afghan dialogue is the course to the exit of President Ghani as the president of Afghanistan. You see, this is, the, right. this is very important. We'd like to discuss it further. Four, of course, is the neighbors, including Pakistan and others. Um, we have repeatedly said, you know, that uh, we are interested, you know, that the all stakeholders in Afghanistan seize this moment for peace and they, they sit across, talk to each other and, you know, come to an understanding. And then, of course, the, the role of some regional powers or maybe one or two regional powers, you know, which are generally referred to as the spoilers, who are not happy with, with what has taken place mm -hmm. so far and they possibly would want that it does not go any further. 
but the real issue, the real tussle, the real conflict is within Afghanistan. This is between Taliban on the one side and President Ghani and other stakeholders. You know, quite a few of them are with him, but some of them are not. Uh, we can also discuss that in detail. <clears throat> President Ghani's role is, has been the most controversial in this, this so far. And I think it will continue to be controversial in the future. Um, as, as I think in the last program, I still remember that we discussed Eloy Jarka. Yes. And I think it was on that date mm -hmm. that possibly they were going to come up with an announcement. Eloy Jarga. So we discussed and I said, you know, that I think he's going to, he's going to manipulate the Eloy Jarga to get a verdict of his uh, liking, which was that they would say that business should not be released. And we discussed and I think, I said, you know, be prepared for a surprise. And, and that surprise did come. Right. The Lord Jarga said that prisoners should be released. So now, the situation has become tricky for President Ghani. Yes. So President Ghani was very unhappy with it. So he did not want to release the prisoners and he wanted to use uh, the, the Lord Jarga, you know, to, to certify that, uh, that, that, that position of his. Right. So when the Lord Jarga said, you know, release the prisoners, you know, so then he had to find some, something else, you know. Um, but to, this to, recent a phone call between Prime Minister Imran Khan and uh, Dr. Abdullah is very timely yeah. because Dr. Abdullah is leading the uh, uh, is the focal person on the yeah, intra-Afghan talk. So how do you see this development I, I, and I, Ghani camp and Abdullah camp? I was coming to that. So as I said, some of them are with Ghani, but some are not. Right. And those some who are not are led. That group is led by Dr. Abdullah Abdullah. And he understandably stands for hmm. earliest commencement of intra-Afghan dialogue. Hmm. And he is, you see, and he's leading the charge also. He's the head of, you know, yes. that group, you know, which is, which hmm. is to engage with Taliban and, you know, facilitate the mm. process you know, to the commencement of the inter-Afghan dialogue. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 you see, uh, the stakes are with him, with mm. President Ghani basically, unless he releases the president. And I, I was speaking to a couple of people today. I just wanted to get some first-hand mm. input into what has transpired. Uh, Pakistan has once again been called upon to, to speak to the Taliban, to talk to the Taliban, to, uh, to convince them to be a little more flexible. And what is that flexibility that, uh, that, mm, yeah. that people or some countries expect of them? That they should, irrespective of whether the prisoners are released or not, they should go for the intra afghan dialogue because it's a win-win situation for them. But, but I have been given to understand mm. that the Taliban have taken a very inflexible position and said, well, if they are not abiding by these agreements, then how can we trust them that they will abide by the agreement that we arrive at at the intra afghan dialogue? Mm. So this is a position that they've taken, although they are apparently very, you know, they've shown uh, right. uh, interest in, you know, sort of, you know, accommodating the other party, you know, but they feel that uh, going back on an agreement that they've signed in black and white is possibly uh, not encouraging for them. And they feel that, you know, we, we cannot trust them in future. So these are the divisions, basically. Um, Pakistan's position, Pakistan, the fact that they, they invited the Taliban to come over, I think it's wonderful. It's very positive. It shows Pakistan's interest in peace. It shows it's a reiteration of Pakistan's uh, uh, interest in peace. And, uh, uh, and it's also a reiteration of the fact you know, that uh, we, we, we're close to the Taliban. We, I think they have uh, our confidence and we have their confidence. And I think you know, Pakistan can continue to play uh, a role of a facilitator. And they would process, want, of course, the Taliban, right. all, all the stakeholders in Afghanistan, yeah. they would want regional support for the intra-Afghan yes. uh, political. And the spoiler part is that you know, there is other... If you allow me, I'm going yeah, to ask this right. question to Dr. Sarvat, exactly after this that. same after point, that. and we're going to discuss about the uh, spoilers. Uh, Dr. Sarvat, how do you see uh, this point of uh, spoilers that Prime Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi raised up? Uh, we have seen the way ISIS has been targeting innocent people in Afghanistan. And interestingly, uh, many of the uh, members of ISIS were Indian nationals. How do you see the spoiler point? Well, uh, thank you. Um uh, I think uh, things are now becoming more clear to the entire world community that India is directly involved in this uh, whole issue and well, India is actually playing a very dangerous role and is spoiling the regional peace actually because uh, you can see that uh, even on Afghanistan side they have realized their officials they have realized that this would not be possible to bring peace in Afghanistan without the help of its neighboring states. And now the uh, point is very clear that India's involvement and India's different, you know, spies, uh, which are nowadays even in limelight and world is watching 
India's direct involvement in Afghanistan, and they are uh, watching that actually peace uh, is not coming in Afghanistan just due to some of the spoilers there. And India is indeed playing a role of spoiler, and that's why there is presence of uh, you know, uh, different uh, spies which are not only there in Afghanistan, but even uh, we cannot forget, uh, uh, you know, uh, developments uh, there in Pakistan where the Pakistan's agencies, they even identified this, that India is directly involved uh, in, in uh, uh, you know, uh, spoiling peace there in Pakistan as well. So this is uh, now clear to the world community and you can see that nowadays there is a pressure of America as well that they want to uh, you know um, uh, persuade different uh, communities to step into this peace process and they are also trying to um, you know speed up this process and the reason right. is that they know that the spoilers they are becoming uh, more active day by day because more Pakistan is going toward the economic you know um, the achievements Pakistan is making nowadays more we can see the involvement of India's um, uh, role dangerous role in the region right and Dr. Shabat recently uh, France and Australia have asked the Kabul government not to release uh, those Taliban who were involved in killing of uh, their uh, uh, people in <laughs> Afghanistan. Uh, do you think that this statement from France or Australia is about uh, assuaging their uh, domestic politics or is it about actually having an impact on the intra-Afghan talks? Uh, see, um, I think, Tamur, uh, that there, there is indeed every state is having its own interest and such statements are not weird enough because I can even relate it with domestic politics because every state is uh, literally want to appease its own uh, people and citizens. So this is not something, uh, you know, uh, uh, something uh, different uh, because I, I think that the uh, statements of these two countries, uh, these are uh, on the basis of their uh, uh, interest and on the, on the uh, if, if we want to understand this conundrum, then we can see that obviously uh, other countries, they are uh, using it and propagating their agendas in a way that they are uh, highlighting such issues uh, while using these instances. Otherwise, I think that uh, these statements are uh, not actually going to affect the uh, policies of uh, states. And now at this stage, we should look at the policies instead of the statements because uh, everyone wants uh, peace here in Afghanistan, which uh, we know. I'm not saying that this is uh, this is uh, something you know uh, good had happened with with these states, but uh, one must uh, realize is it that uh, you know institutional change and overall uh, you know reforms these are not possible without sacrificing something so if uh, you are not ready to uh, you know release then it means that again there would be uh, you know standstill position and uh, there there would be we, we can see that there was a delay February and uh, till today you can see that right. why there was not any advancement just because of these issues that they were not releasing so uh, I think that uh, we, we should take it as statement instead of uh, the part of policy right right uh, Dr. Samit please stay with us uh, Avian Bhatti uh, France and Australia there uh, statements, let's say, and the way they have been asking the Kabul government, the timing is very important and interesting. And this is exactly what the Taliban have been saying, that while they are going to discuss about the intra-Afghan talks, the release of the prisoners, uh, <coughs> Australia and France are asking them not to release those, those Taliban. If the people of Afghanistan can ask the lawyer Jirga, or the lawyer Jirga can give the approval, why not other countries? And, and primarily it's the Afghans who have lost so many people. So they want to go on with the, with the talks. What's the issue with uh, uh, France and Australia? Well, I agree with Dr. Saba that uh, on one side we have France and Australia who are uh, America's allies. Mm -hmm. America was leading that coalition. And if the Americans have agreed uh, with the Taliban that these <coughs> prisoners will be released yeah. and uh, the Taliban have agreed that the moment they are released, they will be, they are ready to enter into that uh, intra-Afghan dialogue and uh, move the peace process forward. So, uh, 
statement by Iran and Australia, in fact, goes against France and Australia, right? Uh, uh, yes. uh, uh, goes against the, the, the American agreement mm -hmm. with the, or the American yes. commitment. Even as allies, you know. Yes, right. as allies. So, if anything, they should they should have asked the Americans not to, uh, you know, uh, agree to uh, the release of these prisoners. Mm -hmm. And if the American, as a leader of the coalition, has have agreed and they've signed, right. then I think uh, uh, both France and Australia are on a weaker footing. And as Dr. Saver said, that it primarily could be for their own domestic consumption. Mm -hmm. A local political, you know, <coughs> point scoring against uh, <coughs> uh, with their own people, but at the same time, we find that it is going to encourage uh, money. Yes, that here are two uh, big, uh, you countries. know, big uh, countries who are uh, insisting that I should not release and I cannot ignore, uh, <coughs> you know, their, their protest and their request to me. So, he, of course, strengthens his viewpoint, but at the same time, we also know that, you know, he had called like a Loya Jirga, there were around 3,000 people and they, they all agreed that all these prisoners must be released. Right. So, uh, which again weakens his uh, viewpoint and then we have the American commitment. So, I, I think uh, eventually, uh, while we may be uh, looking at the uh, Taliban to still go ahead uh, but Taliban have a very strong viewpoint that if there is an agreement, there is a commitment that has to be met and prisoners have to be released. And, and interestingly, France and Australia never talked about uh, not releasing those Taliban when actually this deal was getting you know, signed between the Taliban True. and the US and or when they started meeting in Kabul for that matter. We are going to discuss about this. After this break, we will take a break. We are going to get, uh, continue our discussion on Afghanistan. Stay with us. <clears throat> Welcome back. We are discussing Afghanistan and the future of intra-Afghan peace talks. Taliban were visiting Islamabad and a uh, lot of interesting things have been coming out. Taliban want peace and stability in Afghanistan. But at the same time, uh, both Prime Minister Shah Mahmood Quraish and other officials talked about the role of uh, spoilers and the way they can sabotage <coughs> this, the prospects for peace and stability in Afghanistan. Mr. Hassan, talking about these developments uh, and the future of intra-Afghan talks, uh, recently we saw the, uh, uh, I would say, re-emergence of Jamaatul Ahrar and, and uh, Hezbollah Ahrar, TTP. Again, the timing is very interesting. Uh, the way different countries have been playing in Afghanistan, that too is one of the issues in Afghanistan. <coughs> uh, what would be the impact of these terrorist organizations uh, operating in Afghanistan on the intra-Afghan peace talks? Well, uh, technically there should be no impact. As a matter of fact, this should further expedite the commencement of intra-Afghan dialogue. The process of reconciliation must go forward you know, because it suits everybody, including most, most importantly, the government of Afghanistan, Afghanistan itself. You know. Peace in Afghanistan is a must. You know. I think they have been uh, going through this fray to site you know, for the last four decades. And they're quite sick and tired of it. I've spoken to so many Afghans, basically. They want, they want an early commencement of dialogue, you know, so that there's an early uh, uh, agreement uh, leading to peace uh, in Afghanistan. I understand that there's going to be uh, no total peace in Afghanistan at the outset. You know. I think for that, all stakeholders will have to sit together and keep fighting for it over a period of time. But at least uh, the process must come to some fruition base and, you know, let there be a government, you know, which is acceptable to all stakeholders, you know, and Taliban should become a stakeholder in that government, and you know that. But as I said, you know, I started this uh, discussion, you know, with, with listing out the uh, stakeholders, and uh, uh, if you go back 20, 25 years, you know, there's some, some, there was a coalition known as the Northern Alliance, basically. Well, technically, that Northern Alliance is today ruling Afghanistan, right? Technically. Uh, and uh, that is why President Ghani is so afraid of it, because, you know, they, they, he remembers the past, he remembers the history, and he understands, you know, that uh, uh, a peace deal is not going to be advantageous, you know, to his continuation as President of uh, Afghanistan, and that is at the core of this delay. Uh, uh, a couple of other things, you know, before I come to right. this. Uh, uh, I think the, the two countries, you know, that you're talking about, mm. they're not objecting to the release of all prisoners which are still in the custody of the government of Afghanistan. Mm. They are only objecting to the release of some of them. So it will be quite 
uh, appropriate for President Ghani to that to that to demonstrate his his uh, commitment to the peace process or to the to the to the commencement of the peace dialogue, he sh he releases the rest of them or holds back five or six of them, you know, uh, against whom or about whom these two countries have expressed reservations, you know. But right. he is he's using this excuse to hold on to all of them. And this is, in fact, you know, what has That's been right. discussed at the at the Palais also. Number one and number two. The second important point is that uh, when he when he convened the Loya Jirka, um, he basically thought that Loya Jirka would not be uh, coming out openly uh, uh, in favor of release of the prisoners. You know, when Loya Jirka did, uh, said that you know we we, sh we should release the prisoners, you know, he had really nothing to uh, fall back on. So he signed that tease, mm -hmm. but. He still did not want to release it, so he, you know, he delayed it further. Otherwise, these prisoners should have been released about three, four weeks ago. And some people, but they were not. And it's so, very interesting. Some people think that since President uh, Ghani too is supported by a, <coughs> a faction, political faction, small faction rather, which would never want Kabul to release those Taliban, just to assuage their demand, President Ghani went for the lawyer jaga because he knew that the lawyer Jirga would give a green signal to the release of the Taliban. So he didn't want to take the responsibility and to show that faction that it's not me, it's the lawyer Jirga which wants the release of the Taliban. Well, if that were the case, then he should have released the prisoners without any delay. But he's still sitting on them. Why? Because the objections is only to a few of them, not all of them. Right. So he's still sitting on them. So basically, my contention is that he wanted to use, make use of the lawyer Jirga to get a negative vote, which he did not. So, you know, he was shocked kind of thing. And see, and he, so now, let's come to the spoilers. Uh, Pakistan is on board. Hmm. is one of the initiators of this peace process, the major facilitator. America has expressed it multiple times. As a matter of fact, they are exerting a lot of pressure now. They have cut off aid by a billion. They are threatening to cut off aid by another billion hmm. next year. So, you know, on the face of it, basically, they're all for it. And they're urging President Ghani to move forward with it. Right. Uh, China is on board, has been a major player, you know, in, 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 in this peace process. You know, Iran has is, is now on board, has been very closely engaged with Taliban. Russia has been very closely engaged with Taliban. The Central Asian countries have been very closely engaged with Taliban. So, that leaves out India. India is the loser in Afghanistan, mm. and this is the reason why uh, they are playing a, a role which is to the detriment of, uh, of, of the commencement of inter-Afghan dialogue. And they are doing this not just on their own, but they're using players, terrorist players in Afghanistan, which is the ISIS people mm. and the other two groups you know, that you mentioned who are now merged in the, in the ISIS uh, camp. Right. So they're all, they're being funded, they're being supported you know, by India. So this is the game plan at, in, in Afghanistan at this moment in time. So if President Ghani, so I come to my core you know, point that I would like to make, that mm -hmm. if President Ghani delays it further, delays it further, mm -hmm. then the, the prospect of peace you know, may, may actually disappear for some time. Mm -hmm. Because then there's going to be a horrible sort of outbreak of uh, patricide in Afghanistan yet again, which does not work to the advantage of anybody. I mean, who wants destruction, further destruction of Afghanistan? Absolutely. So, you know, probably this is, this is that critical moment for President Ghani to take a pick between his person mm. and the state of Afghanistan. And I have been saying this repeatedly and writing repeatedly on this, you know, that I think it is Ghani's person which stands in the way of peace in Afghanistan at this moment in time more than any other threat. So right. it is, I think he must, he must introspect, you know, and he must say that, all right, I have ruled this country for six years and all right, let, 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 let's pave and the way is, to this peace. This is very interesting. So, so uh, this, this, is, this is critical. This I, is I'll critical. put this question to Dr. Sarva. Dr. Sarva, uh, this point is very important that probably uh, President <coughs> Ghani and a small faction in Kabul would want to delay uh, the intra-Afghan peace talks because this would benefit them. Uh, but at the same time, looking at Trump administration's approach toward Afghanistan, they want to expedite the process. Uh, uh, Zalme Khalil Zah, the American envoy, has uh, been visiting the, the region of Afghanistan very often. And they're adamant that the peace talks should start as soon as possible. Uh, how do you see Trump administration's approach towards Afghanistan and the way they want to expedite the process? Is it in clash with the Ghani administration? Uh, actually, it's a conundrum and it is very difficult to uh, explain in a black and white uh, you know, uh, way because we know that there are stakes of different states and indeed America is uh, a big uh, stakeholder over there. 
but uh, we cannot ignore the coming elections in america because uh, i can use this lens that why america is now uh, is is now trying to solve this issue with full speed why because we can see that elections are very near in america and um, <clears throat> president trump because he promised with his nation that he would be uh, withdrawing the forces from afghanistan and i i am using this lens that now it is another you know domestic car which now america is using that it wants to he wants to uh, i'm i'm um, i'm talking about uh, president trump appease mm. his own uh, nation that uh, he is fulfilling uh, all the the pledges and the promises which he made with his own people so uh, this is this is uh, one way to look at this uh, you know issue the second thing is that why now america is um, uh, you know taking this issue more seriously because uh, we know cpac which is uh, uh, on its way and we know that uh, soon uh, it will be uh you know uh working and different countries they are already you know uh signing different agreements and pakistan is um nowadays in limelight and uh, we can see that these changed policies are also affecting on america's policies toward afghanistan because uh now they know that this is the right time to use this platform i mean like pakistan because pakistan can play a favorable role for america otherwise it would be too late and this is the right time because we know that the hey time for america because uh, they know that uh, after some time uh, with with this uh, uh, you know um, cpac the uh, the the, the um, tier 3 after the completion of that we know that it would be too difficult to persuade uh, the other stakeholders and you can also take it uh, with another uh, you can use another lens that is about russia we know that russia's different organization security organizations particularly this collective security treaty organization is taking afghanistan as as an observer state similarly shanghai cooperation organization is uh, now um, you know ha having having its direct uh, you know it it it's focuses more on afghanistan peace right. so we can see that all these organizations russia china everyone is taking interest and now the time is that who would be taking lead in this in this uh, peace process and that's why we can say that this is another reason to say that america is now uh, speeding up this uh, it's trying to speed up this process uh, so these are three different points there are so many other reasons uh, we, which we can take that why america is now utilizing this time and the most uh, important thing is uh, you know this covid uh, because here we i, I can take it uh, again and other uh, important point right. because in this time period in this covid time period we can see that different countries are now accelerating their their uh, you know um, pending projects so this the, to, to me these are different uh, you know um, explanations yes please right right uh, avian bhati do you think that trump administration would uh, let president ghani to deal with the situation because trump administration is running out of time election year in Uni united states and uh, trump administration has come a long way they have invested a lot some khalizad visiting afghanistan very often uh, having talks with the taliban that too was a big deal back even in the united states and also interestingly going against the military establishment back in us so uh, do you think that us at the <coughs> moment would let ghani decide the fate of the intra afghan talks or do you think that they would push president ghani to go for the talks and start the uh, intra afghan uh, process well it will be very em embarrassing for the americans to let things uh, slip away <coughs> because lately we have seen that they tried to make a move in the security council regarding em arms embargo on iran yes. that that failed that was a huge embarrassment for the mm -hmm. americans now here we are that 29th of february they signed an agreement and there was a date by which the intra afghan dialogue was to start and it didn't happen and it is still not happened and uh, america being a guarantor of implementation of this agreement so it it, it is a failure of the americans if uh, things are allowed to take uh, their shape as they would uh, 
uh, that means there is increased violence and uh, <coughs> we, we also know that on daily basis there are scores of defection taking place from Afghan National Army who are leaving their ranks and they're going and joining Taliban. So Ashraf Ghani is losing control though slowly but surely uh, within Afghanistan and uh, Taliban are gaining ground. So if, if anything, uh, Taliban can wait it out. Uh, but the fact is that uh, the, the Americans have already started to cut back on aid. They have started to already giving signals to Ashraf Ghani right. to implement the agreement that they have uh, signed. So I, I think uh, uh, while Ashraf Ghani may be waiting for the new American regime, hoping that they would uh, reverse the entire process and they continue to stay and Ashraf Ghani will continue to uh, remain the president, I think there is little likelihood of that. But he is hoping against hope. And, and Mr. Hassan, do you think that, as we know, President Trump is pretty straightforward. Do you think that he would run out of patience with the Afghan government, with President <coughs> Ghani for that matter? Because they have been putting in a lot of effort in Afghanistan. And by the way, Ghani administration knows that they are supported by the U.S. They continue because they are, con uh, they are supported by the U.S. If you, if you, if you uh, uh, go through the tweets, the recent tweets of Ambassador Khalid Zadano, you would understand that uh, they're running out of patience. Or at least they are demonstrating that they're running out of patience. Because there may, may, may still be a kind of diversity between what they're stating you know, and what they actually want, want, want to happen. Uh, yes, they are. They've run out of patience. So they're running out of patience and all that, to be more correct. To state. <coughs> but what are the options that America has? They're not going to forcibly remove the regime in Kabul. Obviously, they're not going to do it. Too late now. So it's too late. And that possibly was never an option because they are the creators of that regime. They are the creators of this kind of democracy, you know, which is currently uh, functioning in, in Afghanistan, whatever you may like to refer to it. Because the, if less than 10% people of a country participate in elections, which too, in a dubious manner, I mean, you, don't, you can't call them legitimate. And that is why President Ghani is there as a consequence of that very dubious election that was process, you know, that was conducted in Afghanistan. So his own legitimacy uh, for the last five years, you know, hung on a, a ruling of the Supreme Court. And now it basically, virtually nobody accepts it. And that is why he, had, he was forced, uh, President Ghani was forced to uh, pass on these extra powers, this extra position to Dr. Abdullah Abdullah to lead the charge, you know, for commencement of inter-Afghan dialogue. And this is where the division has come about in Afghanistan. So I feel that even if President Ghani does not abide by the American instructions, you know, regarding commencement of inter-Afghan dialogue, release of prisoners leading to commencement of inter-Afghan dialogue, I think there's little option that the Americans have, you know, there's, there's, the use of force is not an option. So uh, then President Ghani will succeed in delaying a decision to the holding of um, uh, elections in America and hoping right. that President Biden, if he wins the election, he comes, comes in and changes America's uh, stance regarding Afghanistan. That, that's a possibility, that's a possibility, but a very distant possibility. Mm. I don't think that is going to happen, no matter who comes, basically. And I don't believe in this, uh, this, this uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, theory that uh, President uh, Trump did it without the American establishment on board. I don't think American president would do that or can do it. Mm. No matter, I mean, depending on how you want to look at right, it, basically. Right. So, for me, the American establishment was on board. Maybe some people within the establishment, there's mm. always a division. General James Matters. Right, right. Yeah. There, see, there may, be, uh, there may be division within the establishment. Mm. By and large, American establish was, what, establishment was on board with President Trump in taking this decision because this war had gone on for 19, long, 19 and a half years now. It doesn't make any and sense. And it, it was not leading to any success for the Americans, basically. So, they, they were left with no option but to negotiate. So, I think President Ghani will again... Uh, is, is again mistaken, you know, that induction of uh, President Biden as President of America will lead to a radical change mm -hmm. uh, in American policy vis-a-vis -vis Afghanistan. So I think wisdom should prevail and I think he should come to the table and commence the dialogue with, the, with the, release the prisoners and maybe hold on to five or six mm -hmm. people. I think the Taliban would agree to just five or six people, you know, who are, uh, who these two countries, you know, have said should not be released. You know, he should go on and release the rest of them, you know, and commence the dialogue with the Taliban. But right, that, right. as I said, is the path to his ouster as president of Afghanistan. So I feel, my personal understanding of President Ghani is that I think I would, I would, I would put my stakes uh, against the commencement of dialogue at least till the third of November. Right, right, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us, AVM Bhatti. Thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us. Mr. Hassan, pleasure having on the show. Thank you pleasure. for joining us. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Dr. Silver, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time. That's all from today's show. See you next time. Khuda Hafiz.